Okay, well, good morning. Uh, this morning we're here for the winter weather preparedness meeting. Uh, just wanted to just give you a little bit of information. Um, the mayor could not be here today, so my name is Terry Ball, Streets and Stormwater. I'll be speaking about uh, where we're at on the preparation today. I uh, did want to just go through some, some information. Uh, the city is prepared this year. We do feel like we're in better shape this year than we were last as far as our equipment. Um, over the years we've been able to try to get some new equipment. got some this past year and with the recently approved Improve Our Tulsa, uh, we foresee that over the years we'll be able to keep replacing our old equipment. Uh, that truck that the mayor put his foot through uh, uh, is no longer with us. It's gone on to a better life. So the, uh, the goal is just to keep continually replacing that equipment and be able to prepare and uh, respond better. Our goal through the winter weather when we do have events is to be able to get all the expressways and streets uh, cleared and passable as soon as possible after it begins. Uh, our crews have 35 routes that they do, over 1,770 lane miles that we do during an event. Uh, basically, if you consider that, that's the same as driving from Tulsa to San Francisco, so that's a lot of streets that our crews are responsible for clearing during that. Uh, one thing that if you want to look at the, the route map, you can go to City of Tulsa.org, Winter Preparedness, and those routes that we do work on are listed there. Uh, again, our first focus during the winter events are for the uh, arterials, uh, to get those open, especially then uh, we go to our second focus, which is residential, collector streets, hospitals and school areas, uh, and residential where they have very steep hills. So as far as a few items, just want to tell you, we have 66 uh, truck-mounted salt spreaders. We have uh, four liquid applicated system, which is a liquid brine. That's one of our uh, tools that we really use a lot now. We try to get out ahead with, that, with the brine systems. We have added two applicators this year. Last year we only had two, this year we have four. So that will help us a lot on being able to respond early on before the events begin. Uh, we have 47 truck uh, mounted snow plows. Um, so, and we have seven four by four pickup trucks, three motor graders, and it takes about 170 employees to do a full scale response if it's a 24 hour response um, through that event. Uh, our goal is always to try to maintain about a, a 12,500 tons of salt on hand. We're in the process of continuing to re receive salt and stockpile that in case we do have a weather event. And again, we have two salt brine mixing systems, one here at this yard, which is the west yard, and we have one over in the east yard where we refill those brine trucks that go out and, and apply to the bridges and overpasses and get ready for the storm that may come. So other than that, I'd like to introduce Steve Piltz. He's the meteorologist in charge with the National uh, Weather Service. And, Sure. Good morning, everyone. Just a couple of things uh, about storm preparedness, and I'll tell you a little bit about the winter outlook. One thing to keep in the back of your mind as we go through any kind of winter storm event this upcoming season, something you guys could file away that we need to hit after we've had a storm, is, is um, carbon monoxide safety and generator use. That's something that we always end up losing folks after a big event because they lose power, they lose heat for whatever reason. In the, storm, in the storm, in the cold, and they use some kind of word burning device that's not properly ventilated that can be dangerous, and so the carbon monoxide poisoning is a real threat, and also just safe generator use. So as you think of everything else that we need to talk about, slowing down, being safe, all the other stuff we want to do before winter storms get here, after the storm is hit, if you guys can run stories and talk about that a little bit, I think that would that'd be a good thing. Uh, from the National Weather Service standpoint, we're basically in, in almost continuous contact with the city of Tulsa before and during winter storm events, uh, we will sometimes begin to call uh, briefings where we start talking to government leaders in the area two or three days before a storm, and then we'll do that daily. And then we can stay in constant radio and internet and, and other communications means so that we, we can pass information back and forth because it's not only important for us to hear, for us to be able to communicate what we think, it's good for us to get feedback from the city to know how is the storm evolving, is it, is it what we think it is, so that we can tailor our messages that go out to the public as well. A little bit about the winter outlook, and you guys know if you've, if you've ever heard me talk about this, we, we actually have very little skill in winter outlooks. Uh, weather in Tulsa is hard enough two or three days out, two or three months out, it's even a bigger deal. But when you start talking about seasonal outlooks, the, that forecaster starts thinking about the oceans, and, and that's because 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, and water holds a lot of heat. And so the oceans do have a lot to say about what goes on in the climate, and so you'll hear a lot of conversation about El Nino, which is warmer Pacific water near the equator, and La Nina, which is cooler than normal Pacific water near the equator. And so we look at those as having influences on the weather over North America. Right now we're in what we're, we consider a neutral state where we're, not, we're neither warm nor cold in the eastern Pacific waters around the equator, and so that's, that's considered a neutral state. 
but we can still kind of dig into some things a little bit. Now the official forecast from the National Weather Service's Climate Prediction Center has equal chances for above, below, and near normal temperature and precipitation. But if you dig a little bit more like we've done in the office here and look just at the winters that have been neutral since 1990, we can say that there's a little bit of a tendency to lean towards a little bit warmer than normal as far as, as the overall winter season goes. And really, we looked at January, February, and March as, as, as the forecast time period that we were looking at. On this, on the, as far as precipitation, we lean the odds tip just a little bit towards wetter than normal. If we consider just these neutral conditions that are just slightly above uh, normal water temperatures, but not enough to become considered an El Nino. So that's, that leans a little bit towards you know, warmer and wetter. But wetter in the wintertime always introduces the chance for, for winter weather. And if we look at snowfall in particular, we see there's actually a tendency for a, an increased number of snowfall days with the current conditions that we have. But we see no signal on a mount. And so it could be just a number of nuisance events that keep you guys busy, but <clears throat> isn't the big storm. And of course, that's, I know that's what we're all talking about. So we're all sitting here thinking, are we going to have that big storm? And we, when you start thinking about winter outlooks, and when I start using the phrases that we're tipping, you know, odds tip one way or the other, you can think about it best as a baseball player. That, that ball player who comes up to the plate, it's the end of September, it's the playoff run, and they're batting 225. It hasn't been their big, their big year, so when they come up in that key role, the odds tip away that that person is going to do something, but yet what that person actually does depends on the game and the pitcher and everything else, and they can still hit the home run. So even though we say the odds may be tipping towards a warmer, a warmer winter, slightly warmer maybe, and maybe the odds don't really favor big ice or snow that we can see right now, there always can be that one home run storm that shows up that becomes the big deal. So that's why it's very important every year that we, we do these kind of conferences and we talk about this a little bit. And I think it's even more important now because we haven't had big winters the last several. For a while, Tulsa was getting very used to being a northern city from like 2007 to 2011, 12, 13. We were as practiced as anybody on, on major ice storms and blizzards. Now we've kind of lost that a little bit. And so another big winter storm is going to hit the city a little harder than usual because we're just not going to be used to that. So with that, I know we'll have some time for some questions later. Um, just real quickly, uh, Joe Kralichek with Tima couldn't be here today, uh, but do it. just want to pass on. A lot of time what he'll uh, tell you is just make sure as citizens that you're prepared. Uh, both have batteries, uh, have your kits ready at home uh, in case you do were to have a power outage or something like that. And also, so water, food, a little bit extra at your house. Also make sure that your cars are uh, ready and prepared for winter weather, batteries, uh, fluids and all those kinds of things. Check your tire um, just to make sure that they're ready if you do have snow. So again, from the team standpoint, just it's more about being prepared if we do have an event. So just make sure you take a little bit extra time and check on both what you have in your house and also your car that you're ready. In case you did get stranded, have that blanket and extra uh, winter weather gear in your cars when you do travel if there's a weather event coming. So it's other than that, I believe there's uh, time for doing individuals if either one of us, if you'd like to do any questions.